Last week we talked about Easter eggs hidden inside of comic books and why new comics are released on Wednesdays. Let's see what you guys had to say. So a lot of you guys brought up some really interesting Easter eggs that I did not go over. A couple Jim Lee ones that I thought were really interesting. Josh Cormack brings up the Superman Unchained number three that says, I love Carla written in the broken chains, which is kind of sweet. Um, but also Roger Fusselman talks about uh, Batman 609 and how there's a thug that has a bandana where in another language is written Jim Lee's birth name, which I found really interesting. Richard Moran asks how I could have possibly forgotten all of the Kingdom Come Easter eggs, like Rorschach being in the background, or even all of the Marvel characters that make appearances, even though it is a DC comic, which yeah, really good point. I feel like that's one that I should save for like a part two, because there are tons of these things hidden in Kingdom Come. So yeah, maybe we'll do a part two. But I know a majority of you guys are here because you want to know what is on the Chrononauts cover, what is on that watch face. Lazar Lilic is probably the closest that I found saying that it looks like a Green Lantern logo. Um, and a lot of you guys actually did write it in the comments, but I was unsure if you just looked it up and wrote it down or if you just genuinely saw it with your own eyes. So supposedly there is a hidden hourglass icon inside of the watch face over the top of the whole thing, which you can see here. Apparently this is what it's supposed to look like. So if you can see that, then congratulations. Apparently you have some rare type of color blindness because uh, as I said, the science behind this is that uh, only about anywhere between 93 to 99% of the population can't actually see that image but those who have that rare, uh, rare kind of color blindness can see it, and that's what you're supposed to see. As I said in the last video, it is a possibility that it is still a hoax. Uh, a lot of people are saying that it is a hoax, that it's not real, they just wanted to get some attention on their book, um, and it did come out at the time when the dress phenomenon was happening as well, so maybe they're trying to piggyback off of that. But my thing is, let's say it's not a hoax, and people actually do see this, but a majority of us don't, so what's gonna happen is someone's gonna come along and say, oh, I do see it, and the rest of us are gonna to say, you're a liar, you just looked it up online, I don't believe you. And so it's just, I mean, how will we know? Unless we have a very tightly controlled experiment, it's still up in the air. But let me know if this is something that you did see. I know a couple people were also saying that it helps if you have a printed version of the comic that you can see physically in your hands instead of an, uh, a digital version or a picture of it. So maybe that helps. On Friday's video, which was about how new comic books are released on Wednesdays, uh, Matthew Charlebois, mm, definitely pronounced that correctly. Charlebois, it's probably Charlebois. Matthew Charlebois uh, said that new music is actually released on Fridays and it has been for quite some time. And I did say it was released on Tuesdays accidentally because, and this is kind of an embarrassing um, confession, I guess, is, because I'm living in the age of streaming media, I can't remember if I've ever actually bought music before. Like, genuinely. So, yeah, that one was my bad. Also, this person, I'm not even gonna bother trying to say what that name is, uh, said that his experience was different and that comics, even in the 80s, comic shops were releasing new comic books on Wednesdays as the day. So, I guess to kind of clarify this, it's not that before the early 90s, comics weren't at all released on Wednesdays. It's just that each comic shop or publisher had its own different unique schedule. So maybe that shop that you went to did have a schedule where they released on Wednesdays. It just wasn't standardized. And also uh, Diamond did tell me that that was the early 90s was about their best guess, but it's really hard to pinpoint. So maybe they were off by a few years. This is one of those things that without proper documentation about when was the specific exact day when it started, it's gonna be hard to know for sure what actually happened. But that was their best guess, so I guess that's what I'll go with. That'll be it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for leaving some amazing comments. And if you haven't seen last week's videos yet, you can click right here to check out the one about Easter eggs hidden inside of comics. That's a really fun one. Or right here to find out why comic books are released 
on Wednesdays. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, please hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the new comic videos that we release for you every week that explore the philosophy, history, psychology, and more behind your favorite comic book characters. My name is Scott, and I will see you on Wednesday for another episode of Comic Misconceptions. See ya.